Real number. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My name is Walter Bender. I'm um, the founder of Sugar Labs. Sugar is a software that runs on the one laptop per child platform, but it also runs pretty much on any computer. Um, if it can run Windows 2000, it can run Sugar. Um, I, was, I used to be the director of the Media Lab at MIT, and I was co-founder of One Laptop Per Child, but I left to start Sugar Labs back in 2008. Um, when, we, when we first started doing this project, I went all around the world talking to engineers mostly, and I asked engineers to describe to me a great learning moment. And every single engineer I spoke to told me the exact same thing. They said, my great learning moment was when I was trying to solve a problem I was passionate about. Every single person I talked to told me the, a different problem, different set of skills brought to the problem, but it was the same experience, solving a problem they were passionate about. So then I asked a second a follow-up question to these same engineers, and again I got the exact same answer every single time. I said, okay, now that we know what a great learning experience is, let's design a learning intervention for schools. And every single one of them forgot everything they just told me about learning and remembered what they thought school was supposed to be. And what they thought school was supposed to be was worksheets. So every single one of them designed electronic worksheets. My nightmare scenario is electronic worksheets. And you know, if you, if you think about it, and you see this over and over and over again, you go to schools in any country, rich, poor, north, south, east, west, left to right, right to left, doesn't matter. You go to any school and what do you see? You see that the, the, the kids learn how not to make mistakes because if you make a mistake, you're punished. Or if you get the right answer, you get a carrot, carrots and sticks. Okay. So when you learn not to make mistakes, you very l quickly learn not to take risks. If you learn not to take risks, you very quickly learn to assume the position. You learn the exact opposite of being entrepreneurial. Um, you, you, you fall into line. We want these kids to be empowered to change their world, to make their world better. And therefore, they, they shouldn't be falling in line. They shouldn't be accepting the status quo. They've got to take risks. They've got to make mistakes. So we've got to... In, in some sense, what we're trying to do with, well, it, certainly at least with the software, with, with Sugar, was we're trying to give the kids a place where making a mistake is okay, making a mistake is an opportunity to learn. And the, the, the wonderful thing is that there are a lot of teachers out there who get it. There are a lot of teachers out there who actually understand that. And actually one of the, the challenges is how do you bring the engineering and, and, and the pedagogy together because we've got some great teachers, we've got some great engineers. The teachers don't necessarily understand the technology, the engineers don't necessarily understand the pedagogy. We've got to move, move it all forward together. And uh, so, you know, you, you get a, a teacher who's not there to give answers, but there to get the kids to think and learn and challenge themselves and, and take risks and, and feed on each other and, and reflect on what they're doing and um, you know and, and as, as Claudia was saying earlier the learning becomes visible the learning becomes visible to the child to the parents to the teacher to the community and, and everything moves forward so that's sort of uh, anyway cool that, that's yeah that's excellent sort of in broad strokes um, when you're working on a sugar uh, platform what in, in conjunction with say Mac OS X and Windows how specifically were you, what, what was your thought problem? How, how do we make this better for children? So just in broad strokes. Well, I mean, in, in, in some of the things we were trying to do was just make it better for people. Uh, there, there, there are a lot of things that became sort of, you know, legacy to uh, computers and to, to the interface that uh, were, are just plain wrong. Uh, so, for example, double clicking. Double clicking is actually a conspiracy to keep the elderly from using computers. Okay, so got rid of it. You know, it's. Kids can double click if they have to, but there's just no reason to have double clicking in computing at all. And actually, you know, b believe it or not, you know, with these these high you know, touch interfaces that let you do 17 different things and and twist and and do this and that, that that's actually, you know, again, people can become skilled at it, but it actually gets in a way, to a large extent, to the the, the basic problems that people are trying to solve. So part of it was just throwing away a lot of junk that had sort of accumulated over the years 
um, and, and really focus on, on what we think are the, the, the core principles behind learning. Okay, one of the things behind learning is we want the kids to be making things, to be doing things. If you want, we, we think that you learn through doing. So if you want more learning, you want more doing. So a lot of sugar was not giving the kids things that were complete, but giving kids things to build and, and complete for themselves. Um, some of what we did um, was really just sort of a matter of, of um, you know, fitting the, the, the footprint of our machine, which you know, was, was a pretty low-powered device uh, for its time. And that meant really doing one thing at once. So we, we got rid of all the overlapping windows and the 50 different things happening at once. We just said, look, we're, just, we're doing this thing. This is what this is for. The record activity is for recording. It's not for anything else. That's what it does, it records. When you want to paint, you go to the paint activity. When you write, you go to the write activity. So we sort of segregated things out into sort of simple set of, of collections of tools. Um, another thing we did was we really wanted to put this emphasis on reflection. Learning is not just doing, but also reflecting on what you do. And so we have the, the idea of the journal and the portfolio. Very simple ideas, but really trying to increase the odds that reflection is going to happen. And then finally, you know, you know I, I made the observation very early on that um, you know, the only time that collaboration is called cheating is when you're in school. And, and, and yet we know that collaboration is enormously powerful. So we designed Sugar to make collaboration be really easy, to really be evident and, and, and powerful. And so just building that into the system as well. A lot of these things we did in Sugar, you know, some of it were things that were already out there. We just sort of took best of breed. Some of it is stuff that uh, has, has made it into the mainstream now. Um, you know, most of the, the phone interfaces, if you take away sort of the, the gloss, actually operate a lot like Sugar. Everything's full screen, everything's sort of focused on do this one thing. Um, so in some sense, I think we've had a positive influence in that regard, but there, there's a lot missing too. I mean, nobody's really doing portfolio, nobody's really doing collaboration in a sugar-like way. Um, and, um, and, and then the, the final thing is that you know, free software is, is fundamental to the project. And the reason why free software is fundamental to the project is not just because of what it means in terms of software development, but also what it means in terms of culture. That sugar is, 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 has built into it this culture of responsibility. It's not just something you're given, but it's something you have to take some responsibility for. Um, and and um, so trying to sort of convey that through the, you know, through the choices we've made is, is, is fundamental to the project. Cool. And then in the beginning there was like sort of this very simple goal, one laptop per child. Yep. Um, today, do you still sort of feel that's the same goal or do you feel it's morphed into something else? And then also for whatever goal that you, you kind of think you're heading for today, what are the, the biggest challenges to overcome to get there? Well, you know, I, I think we saw the laptop at the time as being the, the, the vehicle by which we were going to give the kids this learning experience. So it really was one learning experience per child. And now there, there, there are more devices out there that could possibly deliver that learning experience. And you know, so one of the challenges we had is to deliver sugar or sugar-like things on, on a broader set of platforms. Um, I still think that the laptop itself is, is in a class of its own. I don't think anything else com comes, approaches it yet. Um, but the reality is there's all this other stuff and kids are getting their hands on all this other stuff. So I want to figure out, is there some way that we can give them some of the, the sugar-like experience with, with those other devices as well? And then, you know, I want to thank you from everyone watching for all the work you've done and, you know, all the kids that have learned from, you know, all the effort you've poured into what you've done. But I'm also curious, what personally have you learned over the past, over this adventure? Well, yeah, yeah, I, I guess I, I, I sort of knew deep down inside that the kids were powerful, but I never really knew how powerful the kids were. I mean, one of the things that's happened over the last few years, there's been this transition. It's been really quite wonderful. First, you know, all of a sudden I started getting patches submitted by kids. Kids were sending me fixes, and now it's actually turned full circle. Now I'm sending the kids patches. Okay, because now, now, you know, they were sending me patches on my software, now I'm sending them patches to their software. They've taken over, and that's, that's the thing that, uh, that's what keeps me going every day. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. And then, um, 
What do you think is, you know, kind of as a last question, what's, what's a story that you feel doesn't get told or the question that doesn't get asked you that, you know, you always want to answer or you want people to know? You know, I, I think it's really the, the, the story of some of these remarkable kids and remarkable teachers. I mean, we, 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 all we ever hear about is the laptop. We hear about the hardware. We never hear about what the kids are actually doing with it. And, and you know, so t having, having some of those stories told, I think, is really the, the you know, there, there are some unbelievable kids out there and there's some unbelievable teachers out there and they're doing every day they're, they're, they're doing their thing, but that's not the story that's ever told. The story is how many laptops were sold, or how many laptops are in this place or that place, or you know, did the laptops break or the laptops not break, or the, you know, how many laptops were stolen. I mean, that, that's irrelevant to the, to the learning saga. Cool. Okay. Excellent.